Hello. So in this video, I'm going to go over some computer code that simulates the noodle uh, experiment of throwing noodles onto the grid. It does that in a computer, so you can do it millions of times. And it's in uh, this thing called Google Colab, which is this platform run by Google where you can run code on their computers. And the nice thing about that is I can give you a link to the uh, file and you can run it yourself. You can play with it. You can run whatever experiments you want. So there should be a link in the description for that. Uh, let me quickly walk you through what it's doing. Um, so if you've never seen a Google Colab before, basically it's organized into these little code blocks and each code block has some code that runs. Uh, this first code block, you can press this play button to run it. Uh, if you press that, it runs it. And this first code block, all it does is import all the packages that we wanna use. Um, so things like it tells the computer, I'm gonna be doing some math. Um, importantly, I'm using this JAX package. So JAX is a package to do things on uh, GPUs. So you might have heard of GPUs being really uh, popular for games, but that you can also do math on them. And the advantage is you can do lots of simple math really fast. Um, so this is all done on in JAX on GPUs, and that means we can simulate like millions and millions of these of these uh, noodle throws um, pretty quickly. So this is the main function, uh, needle, and what it does is it simulates throwing n needles onto a square grid. So uh, uh, so a needle is what I was calling a straight spaghetti in the main video. Um, so you can put in whatever value of n you want. A uh, key is a random key. Um, so that's just how the random numbers get generated. You make a, a key and then it uses that to generate all the randomness. And it just simulates, you know, picks some random numbers to put the needle down. It picks a random angle to put the needle down and it puts down a bunch of um, needles. And then it counts how many times it touches the grid. So um, it's counting if it if it's crossing either the, either the horizontal or vertical lines and it returns how many times it touched the grid. So it tells you their position and um, where things are getting, uh, how many times it's touching the grid. And here's the, the fun one. So this, this new function, needle pick, um, what it does is it draws a little picture of what happened. So you can see here's one, one experiment and I'm throwing 11 needles in this one. Uh, so just like I did in the video uh, and it color codes them. So blue, blue needles, those ones have touched exactly once. So all these blue ones have exactly one touch. Uh, green ones have two touches. So they cross two grid lines and red ones have zero touches. And if you add it all up, um, you get the total number of touches. In this particular experiment, um, it came out to exactly 14. So this one is exactly like what happened in the main video uh, where the, um, uh, the number of touches came out to 14 and the estimate for pi is uh, 22 over seven, which is 3.143. Um, this other function, uh, needle pi, what it does is it runs the experiment more than once. So here are 12 estimates for pi um, with 11 needles. Let me see if I can zoom in. Can I zoom in? Yeah, there we go. Let's let's zoom in a bit. All right, that's probably a lot better for you guys. Okay, so so again, here's the the picture of the uh, uh, simulation. So it got pi is four times 11 divided by 14 is 3.143. This is just like it came out in the main video. And here we've run it 12 more times. And you can see we got a bunch of different estimates for pi. 3.38 is a common estimate. Uh, here was one that went horribly wrong. We got pi is 4.4, which is not very good. Um, 2.75 comes up sometimes. So you might wonder how often do different values of pi come up in this experiment? And that's what the next uh, block does. So it needle counts, it returns this little uh, array with um, uh, how many times you get each value. And here I'm running it a million times. So I'm doing a million samples. In, in this last one, I only did 12 samples, but now you do it a million and you can see it only takes five seconds to run because it's all running on a GPU. So, um, and it returns a little thing that tells you how often you get different numbers of counts. So in the main video, I got 14 noodle crossings. That happens 22% of the time. It turns out that's the most likely thing to happen. Um, sometimes you get 13, about 20% of the time. Sometimes you get 15. And those translate into different estimates for pi. So if you, if you run this, you can get a nice histogram of what's going on. So again, this takes like 10 seconds because I'm running a few million. Okay, maybe only three seconds. Uh, so here are some histogram with the different values of pi that you get by running. it. So the computer has run it a million times and this bar in the middle is showing us that just over 20% of the time, we get an estimate that is just a little bit, a little bit right at, it's very close to pi. And this is the 22 over seven estimate that I got in the main video. Um, the next most likely things that can happen are to get 13 and 15 counts for your noodle crossings. And that gives you a pi value of a little under three over here or a 3.33, I think it is. What was it? This is the uh, 
3.385. So that's that's quite likely to happen as well. Um, so those also happen about 20% of the time, a little under 20% of the time. So these three most likely things, about 60% of the time, you're going to get one of these three values uh, for pi, which are pretty close. Uh, overall, the computer has computed a standard error of 0 0.43. And what that means is that sort of a good chunk of the time, you're within 0 0.43 of the actual value of pi. So this is computed, it's the root mean square error. So it's the difference to pi squared, and you add it up over all the samples, and then you, you take the average uh, and do the square root. So uh, that error is 0 0.43 um, if you are doing 11 needles. So actually, even though we got a good, the, the best possible thing is pretty close, and that happens most of the time, or maybe the most 22% of the time, it's the most likely thing to happen, the overall error is pretty big. So 0 0.43 is not a great error to have when you're trying to estimate a number that's around three. Um, so what you can do is you can run more more, uh, more experiments. So here, instead of using 11 needles and throwing them, I'm doing 44 needles. And once again, uh, the computer has run it a million times and made this nice histogram of the possible outcomes. And you can see now it's a lot more closely centered around pi. So pi is this dotted line in the middle. It's shrinking around pi. And the standard error is now 0 0.2. So now we're sort of off on average, typically around 0 0.2 um, from the true value of pi. And you might notice that I've increased the number of needles thrown by a factor of four, and the error went down by a factor of two. And that's exactly what uh, the central limit theorem predicts. So the central limit theorem kind of tells you that the error in the approximation between theoretical and uh, experimental goes by like the square root of the number of, of uh needles thrown or the number of dice rolled or whatever the number of the thing in the experiment is. So if you quadruple the number of things in the experiment, the error goes down by a factor of two. Um, okay, and you can see what happens. I did it one more time with 176 needles and that has an error of 0 0.1. So it goes down again by a factor of two. So again, the computer took 176 uh, noodle throwings. It did it a million times to generate this nice histogram. And you can see that most of the time you're quite close to pi. You're sort of typically off by 0 0.1. Another way to visualize the same idea of how does it, how does the error go as you change the number of needles is you can draw uh, what I call a needle history, which is a graph of what the value of pi is as you count up the needles. So let's, let's run this. So you can imagine um, in this graph on the X axis, I have the number of needles. So in the experiment, I threw 11 needles and I counted them up all at once, but you can imagine throwing them up one at a time and counting as you go. And if you count as you go, for every number of needles you've thrown, um, you have a value of pi, or a, an estimate for pi rather. And this will go up and down as you like get more or less crossings. And you can see that it kind of like hovers around the true dotted line, which is the real value of pi. So sometimes you overestimate pi, and then later on we underestimated pi. And typically, like we said, you should be off after 11 needles, you should be off um, by about 0 0.4, uh, typically. Um, and you can see what happens, you can do even more. So this is up to 11 needles, or, or maybe just 10, probably just 10. Um, this is the first 100 needles, so you can see the estimate is quite bad. It starts out at four, and then the more needles you throw, it gets closer and closer to this real value. We sort of underestimate it for a bit, um, and you can do it even more. You can do the first 1,000 needles, and you can see that uh, you know, after 100 needles, your estimate maybe isn't so good, but if you do enough needles, then you start to get really, really close uh, to this, to this uh, dotted line, which is the estimate of pi. So the central limit theorem tells you that at time t, or like after you've thrown uh, n needles, the error is like square root of n. And there's a, a theorem called the uh, law of large numbers that tells you that actually it's gonna converge. So if you threw sort of infinitely many needles, this graph would eventually converge to the true value of pi. So that's one way to visualize uh, what's going on. This is kind of stuff you do in a, a, a probability 101 class or a stats 101 class. You can do these kinds of experiments and and see uh, why they work and you can calculate the error and, and things like that and what's the probability that you're within uh, 0 0.1 of pi um, stuff like that so uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed that if you want to check out the code I tried to make it uh, readable you can run your own experiments like uh, I don't know let's let's say uh, let's say I want to run let's make a new code block I can run the needle history again um, let's run it up to time uh, instead of time a thousand let's say I want to do time ten thousand uh, hopefully this doesn't take a ridiculous amount of time. Okay, there we go. So now I have the first 10,000 uh, needle history. And you can see it's kind of boring because it just kind of um, gets really close to uh, to pi. So that's not very exciting. Um, okay, so yeah, I hope you enjoy. I hope you uh, check out this code. Maybe draw some pictures if you want. And uh, see you next time.
Okay, so I'm back with a little update. I forgot one cool feature that I programmed in here. Um, there's this second input into the needle history function, which was one before, and that is the number of independent samples you want to run. So if you change this to five, uh, it'll not only show you the history once, but it'll show you five possible histories. And you can kind of see from this that the way it sort of converges as you go. So this is maybe is, is fun if you want to do that. I don't know, let's do the first 500 uh, things. So there you go. So you can see over time, you sort of shrink towards pi and you can sort of see typically how far you are by looking at sort of the spread of these guys. So I think that's a fun fun thing to play with. And you know, this kind of thing, uh, it converges to a Brownian motion, which is a cool thing in probability. Um, lots of lots of cool stuff to see here. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll really stop this time. Okay, bye. <laughs>